On my last video, I talked to you about using a room drum sample on a live drum recording, and I was using a plugin called Trigger to do so. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you a very cool way you can do drum replacement by using all the tools we already have in Cubase. Hey, what's up, my friend? The Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Hope you're good. Hope you're well. Let's jump right in Cubase and check what we have. Okay, I have a drum recording that was provided by emilydrums.com. This is not sponsored, but I just want to make a quick shout out to Emily for providing me with some very good recorded tracks. Okay, so let's have a quick listen to what we have. Sounds pretty good. And what I'm gonna do now is to add a, let's go with the kick. I'm gonna add a kick sample to complement the actual uh, kick recording we have. So instead of using a plugin like Trigger, I'm gonna do everything within Cubase. So first, I'm gonna double click on my kick recording audio event, and that will open the sampler editor at the bottom. And what I'm gonna make sure here, I'm just gonna bring up the zoom so I can see what's happening. All right, so now I have all of those kick hits and I need to detect them somehow. So I'm gonna use the hit points tab that I have on the left zone of the project window. I'm gonna click on edit hit points. I'm gonna make sure that this is activated and that will create hit points out of those kick drum hits. And to do so, I have two parameters uh, to work with, the threshold and the intensity. So if I use a threshold, that will detect all of those hits by peaks, okay? And if I use the intensity, it's gonna detect all of those hits by the intensity of the hits, okay? So I'm gonna just use the threshold for now, see how that goes. And there you go. So I think the threshold is good enough so it detects all of my kick drum hits. If for some reason I'm missing one of the hits, I can actually add one manually by keeping my finger on Alt or Option and just create one hit point anywhere I want, which can be practical in some cases. So I'm gonna go and make sure that all of my kick drums hits have been detected. And I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna have a quick listen to the kick only. That should be good. So usually I'm gonna just take the time to check the whole track to make sure that everything is okay. Uh, on a kick drum, usually it's pretty much easy. On a snare, you know, sometimes depending on, um, you know, the way the, the drummer plays, you might have to work with the threshold a bit more carefully or maybe a blend of intensity and the threshold at the same time, which can also be done. Um, so now I'm happy with uh, those detections. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back into uh, the hit points tab and go down at the bottom and click on create MIDI uh, notes, which is pretty cool. So uh, this will open the convert hit points to MIDI notes window. And I have two velocity modes I can choose from, the dynamic velocity and the fixed velocity. I'm gonna leave it to dynamic because I'm gonna use, um, for the samples, I'm gonna use a drum virtual instrument. And usually with a VSTI, a drum VSTI, we have several samples per instrument, like the kick drum will have several kick drum samples with different velocities. And uh, by selecting dynamic velocity, that will create um, like MIDI notes with some velocity depending on how hard the drummer was hitting the drums, you know, or the kick drum in my case. Okay, I'm gonna keep the pitch to C1 and length to one eighth of a note, which is okay. And destination, I'm gonna click on and select new MIDI track, click on okay. And at the bottom, I should have a full MIDI uh, channel with all of my notes. Okay, so if I double click, I'm gonna have the MIDI event, uh, like the MIDI uh, sampler editor at the bottom with all of my MIDI notes for my kick drum hits. I'm gonna select all of those notes and just bring up the full velocities, you know, all together. Um, I think that's gonna be good. And I'm gonna go and look for a drum virtual instrument. So let's go and uh, use Groove Agent. And I'm gonna go with the Nashville drum sample pack. So I have my Groove Agent 2 uh, uh, VST channel right here. I'm just gonna bring down the, the media event right on this uh, uh, VSTi channel. Let's open the instrument itself. And this is what I have. So that's the kick on C1. 
snare. Pretty cool. All right. Uh, now, the cool thing about using a drum library like a, or a drum virtual instrument is that I have access to the mixing side of it, you know, the mixer, uh, which is going to allow me to uh, balance the, um, like the room mics with the overheads, with the direct uh, miking of the kick or the snare, which is actually pretty cool. So it gives me a lot of flexibility and, you know, creative options. So if I only want to use only the room samples, I can uh, by just muting or just putting in solo the room channels from the mixer. Uh, and same if I would just want to use the direct sound or a blend of both, you know, I can do everything within the mixer, which is quite cool. So I'm going to leave it as its def uh, default value, which is a blend of uh, uh, the whole mix, like the whole drum mix with the direct sound and the room. And we'll keep that as a sample. I'm just going to have a quick listen. Okay, pretty cool. Something that I do all the time. Once I'm happy with the sound that I'm looking for, um, I'm going to bounce that into audio, okay? And uh, let me just uh, use render in place quickly to do so. And there you go. So this is my kick drum sound. Let me bring that beside my kick drum recording. So what I'm going to do next is to make sure that the polarity is okay, because this is something that can happen by uh, when using and working with samples and real drums. So what I'm going to do is to just to listen to make sure that the polarity is good. Okay. It sounds way fatter when uh, the, the polarity is reversed on my on those samples so i'm going to keep it reversed and so again this is super important to check and also to maybe you know in some cases maybe the alignment is not uh, quite there so you can actually manually move uh, the wave uh, so it fits you know and works with the, uh, the original recording so this is something to check out and even if you're not bouncing in audio you know you can do the same straight on the, uh, the virtual instrument channel Okay, so if you want to keep it this way with your uh, VSTI, you can just switch the polarity again, if needed. Listen first, check which one sounds better and move on. Now, another option I have, instead of using a virtual instrument, I can actually use, like if I have like one shot samples that I want to use, I can actually use the sampler uh, track uh, to do the same thing. So what I'm going to do is to go and choose one of... Uh, like a one-shot sample that I have here. Let's go with this one. And I'm just going to select a sampler control at the bottom. I'm just going to drag the sample straight into the sampler. And this is what I have. Then I'm just going to make sure that one shot right here on top is selected and also fix pitch is also selected. So this way the sample will play the same pitch on either keys you're hitting. And by activating one shot, it's going to play the full uh, sample recording. Okay, I deleted my MIDI event by mistake, so let's create a new one. This time around, I'm going to click on Fixed Velocity, keep that to 100, click on OK. And then I'm going to drag the MIDI event straight into the sampler track. And uh, there you go. Okay, pretty cool. So what I'm going to do now is to listen to the blend with the kick drum the actual kick to see if that works well together. Same thing, I'm just going to check if the, uh, the polarity is good. So that is another option you can use by using the sampler track, uh, which is super fast and easy to work with. You can also create an empty Groove Agent instance if you want to, and this is actually pretty cool. Uh, let me just open that up. I'm still going to use a one-shot sample, the same sample. I'm just going to drag it straight into an empty pad that I have right here. And I can just do the same thing, bring down the MIDI event right into this virtual instrument channel. 
and it's going to do the same thing. The cool thing about using a virtual, like an empty virtual instrument like Groove Agent, is that you can load all of those pads with all of your favorite drum samples that you use on a regular basis. So you can have like one row for the kick drum, uh, like kick drum samples, the second one for snare drum samples, and load that up, save that as an instrument preset, and you're always going to have access to those uh, different samples within one virtual instrument, which is actually super practical especially when you work with the same samples over and over again. So this way, that can be a time saver. So there you go, my friend. This is how you can do drum replacement with the tools we have in Cubase. And if you have any questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, please do so. Subscribe to the channel. Click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Share and like if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, take care and see you, my friend.